Hi, my name is Todd Nelson, and this is my family. The videos you're about to watch are our trip to Africa. That's our inspiration for everything that we do at the resort. We hit six countries in 23 days and traveled a little over 24,000 miles. And I think it was captured perfectly, so I really hope that you enjoy the videos, and more than that, I really hope you enjoy your stay with us. Meet Todd Nelson and his family. Together, they run Kalahari Resorts and Conventions. Resorts inspired by the culture, the art, and the natural beauty of Africa. They believe the only way to bring the best of Africa back home to their resorts is to go out and get it, which means going off the beaten track, taking chances, and traveling beyond their comfort zone. It's not always easy, but with this family, it's always an adventure. We're here at Mother Nature's ultimate water park, Victoria Falls, or as the locals call it, the smoke that thunders. On this adventure, we'll be testing our limits and our metal as we teeter on the edge of the falls, bungee jump into the gorge, and whitewater raft down the croc-infested waters of the Zambezi. Been a long journey to get here, going to Devil's Pool or Devil's Fool. Family? Yeah. 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 We are at the top of Victoria Falls, in Devil's Pool, looking over to where the falls go down to the bottom. It's pretty amazing how tall it is. It's right behind me. You can feel the mist rolling over. Absolutely insane. One slip is toast. They don't even find a body. All what you need to do is to try and dive as far out. Can I run and jump? Oh, you can't run because your legs are tight again. I'm scared. What possesses people to do this? He rocked it. That was so cool. That was sweet. My ride's here. Five, four, three, two, one, five, We went out and hit the first smaller rapid and it was a lot of fun. The first one was only like a two or a three. We still had people fall out of their raft. And then the third rapid was a class five. Okay, get down, get down! And we got tossed out. You don't know that you're gonna fall out, so I didn't catch my breath. I got like shoved under. We were in the middle of a class five rapid getting tossed around. And, and I thought, this is it. I'm over. I'm a goner. I just died in Africa. Okay, guys, relax. You okay? Hey, you okay? Relax. You're okay? Relax, 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 relax. You're okay. Come on the top of the boat with me. Okay, relax, relax. It was actually really scary.
our boat went down into the main rapids and then a wave came and knocked us all over. We were literally scrambling underwater trying to find air. Anytime you caught that half second, you were back under the water again. We kept getting hit. But our lungs are still full of the Zambezi River. Really, really intense experience. Uh, everyone made it safe and we had a blast. When you're experiencing Victoria Falls in any of the ways that we did, uh, you have to appreciate it. And if you don't, it's going to make you appreciate it. Our time here is ending, but we leave the falls with a newfound sense of accomplishment and a deep and lasting respect for the raw beauty and the sheer power of Mother Nature's ultimate water park. Come with us next as we go in search of the elusive mountain gorillas of Rwanda. We've come to Rwanda, the land of a thousand hills, to try and get a glimpse of the reclusive mountain gorillas. Rwanda is home to half of the world's remaining wild gorilla population, who live in the dense bamboo forests high up in the Virunga Mountains. Getting to see them is no easy feat, but one thing's for sure, there's going to be a lot of climbing. Walking sticks. I do need a walking stick. Look at how cute they are. Yeah. Oh my god. I took the tall one. You know when they show up with two cases of water, you're in for a hike. We knew our journey wouldn't be easy, but we quickly realized it was going to be a lot harder than we thought. Uh, we got a couple miles in and the, the trackers are ahead of us. They've got radios. They're keeping an eye on the gorillas. There's someone up in the mountains who's been following them all morning. Hey Travis, I can't believe that I've been able to actually scale up this mountain. We just found a frog. He's colorful, so he may be poisonous. <laughs> been walking for almost a couple hours already, and uh, all of a sudden there's a little doubt whether we're going to find the gorillas or not. The soon we're going to be in the mountain gorillas habitat right behind me. This is the only place you can see them in Rwanda. Our guide gave us a briefing, letting us know what to do and what not to do around the gorillas. He told us if they charge you, you shouldn't move. How often does one grab you? Very often, like every day. You oh my God! If that was a gorilla, you, you, you'd know it. It's a little, a little tiny bit scared. I'd love to fish sturgeon with an earthworm this size. Yeah, right. We've been at this for over five hours. We have been downpouring on for the last hour. We're all drenched in there. As we've been walking, coming across the gorilla tracks, it looks fresh. And we found them. We are this close. We're going to drop our things and proceed into the gorillas. I'm getting excited. It was this really great, peaceful scene. Not 10 feet away, a full-grown gorilla sat eating. When all of a sudden, the tree started shaking. Out of nowhere came this huge gorilla charging at us full speed. Don't, don't run, don't run, don't run. Our guides had told us to make sure you stand still, be submissive, and sure enough, as suddenly as that happened, the gorilla became calm and went and joined the others. Nothing can prepare you for that.
That's pretty good. Everyone's just loving it. We're very, we're very close, and we're getting great views of all of the gorillas. Then, in the flip of a switch, all of a sudden, the silverback decided they need to move on. If we'd have written down exactly what we would have wanted, um, we wouldn't have written it that good. One thing is for sure, we're never going to forget today. To be this close to these magnificent creatures right there in front of us and have my family here with me, I couldn't have asked for anything more special. One of the coolest parts of the gorilla experience was seeing that they are a family. And they are a family just like I have a family. And we all get together and we all have fun and we all help each other out and we eat together and we play together. And, and that's what they were doing, especially the young ones rolling around together. Dad was lounging on the couch. You know, if the football game was on, that, that was the scene that we would see at home. It was something that I'll never forget. Follow us on our next adventure as we explore the depths of the Indian Ocean. South of the capital city of Maputo in Mozambique lies Pontadoro, famous for its sparkling clear water and friendly dolphin population. We're on a quest to learn more about these intelligent creatures from a local expert who studied them for over 20 years. But first, we have to get there. just a constant state of bouncing around in the back seat, you know, for four hours. Once you got to where you're like, this is never ending, you came over to a hilltop and then you saw the ocean and all of us like kind of lit up. Gonna go get wet right and early in the morning. I hope the sun comes out early. Looks like it's rising over the mountain. And off we'll go to find some dolphins. Well, I didn't sleep very well last night because I was just so jacked to get to the ocean and see these dolphins. The guide told us everyone grab a strap and so we all pushed the boat in to start an adventure that we've never done before. And four minutes into it, we see a family of humpback whales are right in front of us. We turn around and not even a minute later, we see dolphins. It really made that trek worth it. Thanks, everybody that's going, put your masks on. And there was some hesitation. I, I wasn't sure what to expect. We were in their natural habitat. Get in the water now. Remember the wildlife does not wait for us. Alyssa, of course, jumped in, loving it. Off you go. So is it the, I can't see the bottom, is it the blue, is it the sharks? Our guide Mitchell had noticed my hesitation. And if you see those things in the water, I promise you, you'll forget to be worried. That's true. Try. Okay. I should have got in with the group now, I'm a little scared. No worries, just relax. Since I did hesitate to get in, the dolphins were a little bit farther away, so I was more swimming towards my husband and Alyssa, as that was my safety net. Start having a little look in the water. I never ever thought that I would be swimming this close to dolphins. At first, we're kind of playing a little bit of hide and seek. I think they were coming to kind of check us out and then go away and like check us out from afar. And then they would do this really cool thing where they circle around you. And I guess they do that when they want to play with humans and that, that was really cool to see. Never did I think that they would start kind of interacting with us and we were making eye contact and I'm like, I just made eye contact with a dolphin in its natural habitat, in the middle of the ocean. Like, this is just crazy. Alyssa's love is animals, and to watch her interact with the dolphins, it felt like she was talking to them.
Jumping in with the dolphins today, seeing the mom dolphins with their babies, having that experience with them in the water, that was my favorite part out of everything that we've done so far. When a dolphin singles somebody out to come in for a really close eye-to-eye -eye kind of a contact, it doesn't happen with everybody. We're not feeding them, we're not touching them. They're not getting really any kind of reward except for the reward spending time with us, which I think is really, really special. Sometimes we really have to get out of our comfort zone to experience something really profound and beautiful. It's hard to describe the sense of wonder and gratitude we felt at being able to observe these creatures in their natural habitat. We won't soon forget this time or the world that exists just below the sparkling blue waters of Pontedora. Travel with us as we encounter the animals of the Kalahari Desert. Every day in Africa is a new adventure. Even our mode of travel is an adventure. So we all walk out onto the tarmac. Sitting out on the runway is this beautiful, gorgeous DC-4, four engines, propeller. It's the kind of plane that maybe Indiana Jones would have traveled in. I love it on the side of the plane. This is owned by the South African Museum Society. To me, it looked like an old World War II plane, like I did not want to get on this plane. A, a sane person might have been afraid. But this thing was so spectacular and it took three people to run it. I always say uh, there are old pilots and there are bold pilots, but there are no old bold pilots. <laughs> no, hopefully we, we are old pilots. They even wore a leather glove when they were running it. This was true flying. Beautiful view of the African countryside as you're flying and we're all in there having fun and getting tossed around a little bit. You know, this flight definitely sets the tone for the adventure. We need to get into another adventure as quickly as we humanly possibly can. Nice and warm. We just flew two and a half hours um, to get to our namesake, to Kalahari. Now I think we have a two or three hour drive. There's cows on the side of the road, there's donkeys, and we're trying to avoid them. It was a long day as, as travel in Africa has turned out to be. And then there we were, at the river that lined up with our camp. We got woken up at 5.30 a.m. for a safari. I opened my eyes and the panoramic windows showed the most gorgeous sunrise that I've ever seen. Our room kind of changed from like a soft gold to a deep burnt orange to a red and then the day was broken. It was spectacular. This is normal? Yeah. Ah. It's very hot now. The elephants are trying to cool themselves down with the mud to protect the skin. Pretty cool to be sitting here at the, at the mud pool where the, the elephants come to completely cover themselves in mud and then to watch him step out and even go into the, the water drinking gallons and gallons and gallons of water. <laughs> That's all. Leaving the mud pits, we jump in our boats, we're headed back for camp, and we turn the corner, and the next thing you know, we are surrounded by elephants. There were so many of them. I'm not talking one elephant, I'm talking like a herd. Right now we are 20 yards away from a herd of elephants playing in the water, cooling off in the afternoon heat. It's like absolutely perfect, trunk to tail all the way across the river. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> They're just mulling over trees like it's nothing, running up a hill. water 
is an important source of life. Everybody, when he gets to the water, he smiles, pulling others in, pushing others. Happiness is for everybody, not only for people, also with animals. As Slade taught us today is uh, treat these animals with respect. It's been a, it's been a really nice learning experience because we got so close today. It's just about time for happy hour to the elephants. The sun is setting and our adventure is drawing to a close. But we'll never forget what we saw and what we shared here. Deep in the desert, where water is life. Deep in the Kalahari. Come along as we learn to ride the waves in the South African surf.